Okay, the first reading today is taken from the Wisdom of Solomon, and we're on page 928, page 928. We're looking at chapter 9, beginning with verse 13. From the Book of Wisdom, or the Wisdom of Solomon, page 928. And the author is basically saying that God is totally different. We cannot understand God at all. God is totally other, as some people say. But we kind of need to know what he has in mind for us, what his plan is for us. And so if we look at the gospel, a couple of times in there it says we have to sit down and think and contemplate and ask God what's going on. Sit down means, I think, that we get away from the television, the radio, lots of confusion, be alone, think, talk to God listen to God and eventually his plan for us will become a little bit more clearly time by time. Here's what the reading says. A reading from the book of wisdom. For who can learn the counsel of God? Or who can discern what the Lord wills? For the reasoning of mortals is worthless and our designs are likely to fail. For a perishable body weighs down the soul, and this earthy tent burdens the thoughtful mind. We can hardly guess at what is on earth and what is at hand we find with labor. But who has traced out what is in the heavens? Who has learned your counsel, unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high. And thus the paths of those on earth were set right, and people were taught what pleases you and were saved by wisdom. The word of the Lord. The gospel this morning can be found on page 1222 in the Bible. The reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, beginning with verse 25, from page 12, 22. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, Brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, All who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. We have some very strong words today in in the Gospel. Words like hate and renounce. Difficult words spoken by Jesus such as, if anyone comes to me without hating his father or mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not renounce all of his possessions cannot be my disciple. Hating one's parents, wives and children, really, how can this be? Is this not contrary to the gospel of life and love, the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
Well, if you look at it, not really. You know, in doing some research, I looked up the message of the Greek words that, these, that this gospel was written in today. I found that yes, the Greek word for hate meant exactly that, to hate, to despise. The word renounce, however, in Greek, literally means to say goodbye to something, to say farewell to the old and hello to the new. It was very typical in Jesus' culture 2,000 years ago to use such words, not for their literal meanings, but to emphasize a point to follow. So Jesus, in emphasizing that we must be completely dedicated to him, he's saying we must someday say farewell to the old life and hello to the new. We must say goodbye to all our possessions and completely give our lives to God if we are to be with him in heaven. Yes, Jesus is telling us what the conditions of discipleship are. He's saying that to be his disciples, we must, before anything else, follow the first commandment. You shall have no strange gods before you. He is telling us that to be his disciples, we must acknowledge God as God, as the one and only God in our lives. And he is warning us that if we do not, if we are too attached to our possessions or even to our own lives, we run the risk of making our possessions and even other people false gods, things and people we put before God himself. Jesus is also saying to us, by strong words and emphasis, that if we are to be his followers, we cannot be lukewarm in our response to his love and his commandments. He is telling us that we must be wholehearted. In other words, we have to make a conscious choice in our lives, rather for him or against him. Jesus asks us, as it is so clearly described in today's gospel, to literally sit down and consider the cost of discipleship. He asks us to calculate the risk involved, to be prudent, in other words, and then to decide to choose and to act. He is talking about conversion, a word that we hear a lot during Lent and very little during ordinary time. He tells us that there comes a time in everyone's life when we have to decide for or against living our faith. God is truly amazing in this way. He never forces us, does he? He doesn't want to do that. He wants us to decide, to make a free choice, to respond in freedom, to make a serious commitment that is in the end will cost us everything, but give us so much more in return. Like any vocation, and really that's what discipleship is, we must freely agree, it must be a free choice. If we are coerced, that is no real response. I'm sure many of, here, of us here this morning have changed diapers on kids, maybe your own, your grandkids, nieces, nephews, etc. It was an act of love, wasn't it? What did you do as they were trying to make their life better, happier? They squirmed and tried violently to twist and turn their bodies away from you and onto their stomachs, making it nearly impossible for you to change them. They resisted. Now, if you think about this, isn't that exactly what a lot of us do? We often are doing the same thing to God when he wants to clean us up, correct us, and show us a better way, and to love us. Is it that just like us to squirm, resist, and turn away? God will never force us to comply if we twist away from him if we twist our minds away from the truth and towards the evil one who is a lie. 
This call to change to conversion is something each of us have, will have or will face sometime in our lives. For some of us, it will be early in life, for others, midlife, for others, older age, for a few in their last moments before death. But that moment of decision always comes, and the question is always the same. Will you love me more than you love your possessions, more than you love any other person whom I have given you, and more than your own earthly life? Will you be willing to let all of this go so you can be with me forever? All of this defies human wisdom in a way, doesn't it? But it is God's wisdom at work here. At work here. It is God's counsel, like we heard in our first reading today. It is God's wisdom, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, who is always active in our lives. So let us listen and let us respond.